it's an absolutely perfect night for astrophotography. You'll have to take my word for it. Um, it's crystal clear, not a cloud to be seen in the sky, and it's actually quite a warm winter's night, really. And there's not a breath of wind there at all. So I've come down to a plantation in the south of the island, and I've walked into the middle of the plantation, and just behind me, there's actually a pond. I don't know if you can hear the running water. But this little pond here is actually surrounded by trees. So I've got a feeling that these trees are going to silhouette beautifully against the night sky, but also will be reflected in the waters of the pond. But not only that, because there's absolutely no wind at all today, I think the stars are also going to be captured in the mirror-like surface of that pond. So I think this has got all the ingredients for an absolute winning astrophotography image. So I've got my camera set up behind me and I'm actually out on a little jetty that goes out into the middle of the pond. And this is perfect because it means I'm not going to get any foreground sort of vegetation kind of sprouting into my image. Um, I need this image to be clean and without distraction. So yeah, well done whoever built this jetty. <laughs> just behind me, the tree line just kind of sits and it goes along like that. And um, Really for the composition here, I'm going to dedicate it kind of 50-50. I'm going to ded dedicate 50% to the actual sky, the night sky, and 50% to the water surface. And I'm going to go for those mirror-like reflections of the trees down in the water. I think it should work beautifully. The fact that there's no wind tonight is absolutely vital for this shot to work because any wind whatsoever and it would disturb the surface of the water so we wouldn't get the reflection of the stars and the trees but almost just as importantly as that um, with any wind we'd actually get movement in the trees themselves and, and you, you wouldn't get any fine detail in the branches they just turn to blurry messes really within the image so the fact that there's no wind tonight is absolutely vital I really can't make that clear enough um, with this kind of image I really want to convey a sense of stillness and coldness. That's really the two key kind of concepts that are going to lead all of my decision making processes on the composition and the settings I'm going for tonight. Let's talk settings. First of all, I've got this on a five second self timer. Um, because I'm stood on the jetty here, I need to have enough time to get off the jetty before it takes the, ima takes the actual image. Um, because there's going to be too many vibrations if I stand next to this tripod and camera and uh, try and take the image that way. So I need to very much get out of the scene. Um, I've also got the Samyang 14mm f2.8, which is my astrophotography workhorse. If you want to find out more about that particular lens, look at the top now. Um, I've got that set into f2.8. It goes without saying, I need the aperture as wide as possible to let in as much light as possible. Um, Using the 500 rule, which is important for astrophotography, you divide um, 500 by the focal length of your lens, which in this case is 14 mil. That gives me about 35 seconds as my max shutter speed that I can go for. But generally, I don't shoot at the max. I like to kind of shoot a little bit lower than that because I see that as being the max that I can go to. So... I tend to find I get a little bit more quality if I just come down. So I'm shooting here at 30 seconds. Um, I'm shooting at 40 mil because it's a fixed lens, a fixed focal length lens. And um, that only really leaves the ISO that I'm dabbling around with significantly here. Um, I'm not entirely sure the final ISO that I'm going to kind of go with here. I'm dialing in varying different ISOs, just testing the water. So I'm kind of in the region of 3,200 all the way up to about 5,000 at the moment. Not sure what the final image will be, but you'll see down at the bottom shortly. And then finally also, I've kind of dialed in a manual Kelvin on the white balance of about 2,500 because I really want this image to feel cold. I want to suck the warmth out of it. So if I just had it on auto white balance, it looked horrible. It really didn't fit my vision or criteria at all. So yeah, by dialing in that manual Kelvin, I've got it looking nice and chilly. 
almost forgot it's important to make clear that I'm shooting at infinity focus on manual focus here. Auto focus is a waste of time at night. You need to be shooting at infinity for 99% of astrophotography situations. If you want to know how to set up your lens for infinity focus for nighttime shooting, click at the top now. Overall, pretty happy with this shot. It looks pretty excellent on the LCD, so I'm very much looking forward to getting home and post-processing this. Now I'm gonna move on because I've got another shot in mind, and to be honest, it's pretty scary in this plantation. Time to go. So I've now arrived at my second destination, which is Clips Reservoir. And what really interests me here is there's a lone tree that sits isolated in a field right next to the reservoir. And it's a little bit of a photography gem here, but I've never actually taken a picture of it. And I've definitely never seen an astrophotography image of it before, which I think is a real, real shame because I think it lends itself to that fantastically. The tree kind of sits in a field with a sloping hill. And this means it isolates the field kind of on the horizon. There's no other trees, there's no other shrubbery or anything. So it, it, I think it's gonna work perfectly silhouetted against that night sky. Um, so I've got to the tree now and um, the tree's kind of situated about 15 meters into the, the actual field. So I had a quick look around the field and um, just hopped over the gate and I've set my tripod up with the camera nice and low to the ground to maximize the amount of tree that I actually get silhouette, silhouetted against the sky. Um, and what I'm gonna go for is star trail images here. So I've started a sequence of 100 images, um, but literally just as I started taking the picture, I heard something running in the field and it sounded quite big. And to be honest, I shit myself. I ran, I grabbed my camera bag and I ran, I ran and I jumped over that gate. And yeah, I mean, in the back of my head, I was thinking, is this a bull or something? But it, you know, it, it's probably a sheep. But um, the thing is I've left my camera in the field. It's still taking its sequence of images. so. I'm gonna have to muster the courage at some point to go back in there. I think I'm gonna let it finish its sequence because I'm determined to get this image. But um, yeah, I'm gonna have to muster some courage from somewhere. So in terms of settings for this shot, I'm pretty similar to the last one. Again, f2.8, um, 30 seconds, shutter speed. Um, again, it's at 14 mil because I'm using the same lens. The only difference this time is my ISO's come down a bit um, to 2,500 because it, this area is not quite as dark as the forest. So I, I don't need to push that ISO quite as hard as I did. Now I'm set up the camera to take 100 images um, at intervals uh, of 35 seconds. So there's a slight pause between each exposure. And that will give me a combined exposure time of about an hour. Um, if you wanna have more in-depth detail on how to take star trail images, click on the video at the top now. I'm alive. And more importantly, my camera's alive. Oh my God. <laughs> I, uh, when the sequence is finished, I basically ran into the field as fast as I could and picked up the camera. But in my haste to get out of the field, I basically ran into a bramble bush. So I've literally sliced my legs to shreds. Oh, God. Astrophotography. Why do I bother? Why do I bother? It's, it's one of the most challenging types of photography. But yeah, I, I do love it. And at the end of the day, if it was easy... Everyone would be doing it, wouldn't they? Um, you may be wondering on my camera why it's got a buff around its lens. Um, that is a makeshift attempt to try and combat dew. And I thought dew was gonna be a big problem tonight. Um, when it forms on the lens on the front, on the glass, 
it can cause big problems in large sequences where you're getting star trails. But luckily enough tonight, I didn't suffer from it. So that's brilliant. I've had a quick look over the images um, during the sequence and they, they look nice and sharp. So I'm quite hopeful that I'm on for quite a special image there. As always, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so to see more of my content in future. Um, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on which image you think is the best, the first or the second one, the, um, the pond or the star trails over the lone tree. Pop your comments below and let me know which you prefer. I'm gonna head home now and get a change of underpants. Goodbye.